Welcome back everybody to Trick Pass of Joy and Ghost of TV on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. It is almost 2.30 p.m. here Pacific in the L.A. California area, Long Beach, California. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to this episode talking about what I've learned about adversity. What I have learned about adversity. So I was listening to one of my mentors, Brooke Castillo, her amazing podcast called the Life Coach Podcast. I highly recommend it. She was talking about similar stuff about adversity a one and a half hour podcast that I love. I've listened to it like a million times. I recommend you do too. And it got me thinking about what I've learned about adversity in the last year, let's say last two years. I've lost my job. I lost over a hundred thousand dollars. My wife also went through similar stuff. We lost people in our family that we love. We've seen family members go through car accidents and break bones and and then if I go back to even, let's say, the last, well, even when I was a young person in my 20s, high anxiety, my immigrant up, upbringing, et cetera. My point is that we all have adversity. And especially these last few years, for most of us with the pandemic, there has been so much adversity that we've all faced. It's not even funny, right? Anybody know what I'm talking about? And yet, in spite of that, here I am, here we all are, surviving, thriving, uh, expecting great things that are that are already here and that are yet to come. And I think sometimes about this stuff, I actually I don't think about it a lot because I don't know, that's just not how I am. I'm not one to think about all that I've grown or how far I've come. I, I'm I'm an Enneagram three, I'm a futurist, so I tend to think sometimes with anxiety about what I want to become. And that often helps me because it pushes me to be better. But sometimes, as I said, it can make me feel anxious about what I haven't accomplished yet. And so those things aren't very useful. I think it is better to look at look back at your life with thankfulness, even the tough times. One of the things Brooke says that maybe is difficult for me to hear, maybe it's difficult for anyone to hear, is that life is 50-50. That life has 50% of the time good things and bad things. That there are 50% of the time that are ups and downs. I agree with the concept. I think it's more 80-20, good versus bad. 80% 20, 80% good, 20% bad. But I think the point stands. I think one of the things that was hard for me, especially these last maybe three, four years, is to realize that there are hard things in life. I have experienced them, and I really honestly hadn't, at least not that I thought of, even though I had dealt with a lot of things, but I felt like I was kind of just skating through life without a lot of harm or feelings of failure until the last few years. And as the podcast, Brooks Podcast says, sometimes I think I didn't expect adversity, and so I wasn't ready for it. Instead, she gives us an analogy of how adversity is important to growth. And it's like going to the gym and you go to the gym. Imagine you go to the gym and you see a bunch of pillows everywhere. No weights, no resistance, nothing to lift, nothing heavy. It's all pillows and beanbags and couches. <laughs> you would say, this is not what I want. I want a gym that's going to have heavy things to lift because I want to grow. I want the challenge. I want the adversity so I can grow. And that really kind of helped me because it places, it puts adversity in its place as a opportunity for growth. The Bible, of course, talks about trials and tribulations being important for maturity, James 1. But again, I have been maybe hard-headed on that and thinking that the point is to avoid adversity and to win at everything. And that could be personality stuff, again, the Enneagram 3, that thinks that everything we touch turns to gold, which it usually is. We are a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> That's we as Enneagram 3s are. We're the achievers. We're the success-driven people. We want to look good and be seen as good at everything we do. Well, what happens when I fail, when I experience insecurities and feelings of failure and shame? That's where some of us tend to get get to lose our way. And so I'm finding my way once again through a lot of hard work, trust, the prayers of my wife, my mom, a lot of personal development, a lot of reading the Bible, and getting back on the horse. And these are things that I've always done. My father did, my mom does, Rochelle, our kids, we're teaching them and they're doing the same things, her parents. 
her dad who's dealing with a lot of adversity health-wise and and the loss of her wife, et cetera, et cetera. This is what we do as the Trig Trigueros Baker family. We grow through adversity because of our faith in Jesus. It's who he is. It's what he's taught us. It's what we do. And so I sometimes want to make lists of the things that I've accomplished. Sometimes I make lists of all my failures. I think both are okay. The failures, uh, I mean, I guess it's good to some degree because it gives you some perspective maybe on how far you've come on the fact that failures do happen. Not to get down on yourself, but just kind of to acknowledge, again, for someone like me, that sometimes bad things happen to good people, right? And sometimes I am a bad person and I don't act like I should, so all that. But then I think it is important to also reflect on the accomplishments only to only because sometimes I tend to understate them or to think, oh, I've gained weight. Oh, my hair isn't as awesome as it used to be. Or, oh, I don't have this degree or I don't have this church this big or whatever it may be that I count as negatives. Instead, I look at life through the first as a pursuit of Jesus, a pursuit of God, as a, a man who is in love with God and who is faithful to Jesus. Second, who's in love with my wife and faithful to one woman. I've been with one woman in, in almost 30 years. It's a huge thing in this day and age for any male. And um, But this has been my commitment. And, and then to raise these three amazing grown young adults that are all in college, soon to be three college graduates, all serving Jesus, all in love with us and with each other, respectful <clears throat> and who love God all in their careers. So what a what a joy, what a gift. What else can I ask for as a man, as a husband, as a father? I am truly blessed. And God is still at work serving at my beautiful church. Shout out to VODTSA, Victory Outreach Down in Santa Ana. Whoop. Serving through, uh, serving at Third Wave LA, you could say, through music production, serving the Dispossessors, Victorious Records. Shout out to my crew. Building a whole new career, really, in some ways it's the same, but it's also new, going from a traditional church job that I've had for 30 years that paid my bills and bought our home and provided for our family, now to this more mosaic life where I am a life coach, where I'm a music producer, where I am a teacher and preacher and pastor and a musician and a worship leader and a singer-songwriter, et cetera, et cetera, but it's not just one thing. And of course, it's scary as heck. I mean, sometimes I have to drive Lyft or I've been thinking about how I can maybe um, do clean, clean homes or what else have I been thinking about? Oh, yeah, working on nine to five as a receptionist at a church or working at a school as an IT person. All these things that I am in the middle of, of stressing, low key, being very anxious, low key, being very excited about because this is the life that I want to live and being thankful that we have a roof over our head, that we're going to Italy this week. Ooh, shout out to our beautiful Isabella, that we just came back from Maui. It's not like we have endless resources or a, a rich uncle, but we have these resources and more is to come. I am blessed with my friendships. I, I really can say that I've never been so blessed. Maybe only one other time was I this blessed as far as friendships that are so fulfilling and refreshing and rejuvenating to me. I am truly Maybe, yeah, since my early 20s, I have never been so happy with the friendships and the purpose and, and what I'm doing and what God is doing through me and through us and through our family. Our home has become even more of a place of worship. I love our church, as I said, the, the young leaders that I get to serve alongside of. Shout out to Pastor Chris and Sister Adriana and to my beautiful uh, friends at, at, at uh, Victory Outreach Bellflower, Sela, Pastor Manuel and Sister Lisa. All the beautiful relationships that we've built, along with thousands, you could almost, it feels like, of young musicians, young music uh, music uh, ministers, artists, rappers, mostly Christian hip-hop. Can you imagine? I was thinking about this the other day, actually earlier today, how I used to dream of being a producer, like behind at, uh, like at KTLA, I remember seeing on TV when they would show the producer with a headset and he had like, <clears throat> he or she excuse me, had like maybe 20 screens and they would call camera one, camera two. Well, I'm doing that. I produce a podcast with three cameras. I produce music for Christian hip hop for maybe six, seven, ten artists. 
so basically I am fulfilling excuse me my dream life I am living my dream life yeah of course resources aren't as they used to be a year ago but guess what it'll be better maybe not right now it takes time to build a business it takes time to build a music ministry it takes time to redo your whole life and uh, yeah sometimes it's hard sometimes it's great sometimes I'm happy sometimes I'm down but we're on the right track my wife and I are one we're in love we date we love each other we go out we enjoy each other being together every day she loves what she's doing we love our parents and most of all as I said we love Jesus and are serving him and I can't wait for what is to come so yeah so what I'm doing now as I said is I am uh, mostly volunteering as far as ministry which I think is the way forward for me and then as far as bills and passion and, and income I'm a music producer life coach media producer content creator I don't mean that I'm a content creator but I produce content for people I'm a producer of content for other people and and more more is yet to come the best is yet to come and I believe that it'll be a million dollar company one day a music and media company that we're building here my, my brother Larry and I shout out to water Walker my beautiful friend who I love so much together with my wife our kids in this beautiful home that God's given us the house that worship built as I often say adversity yes it happens it has a place it's almost at times ruined me and I'm sure many of us feel the same way but here we are standing and I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that he has a future and a hope and uh, that he is not out to harm us or to destroy our lives that if we remain faithful of course he will be faithful as well and so that is the, the only and big requirement is that we remain faithful that we are like the prodigal son running back to our father's love so that we can be restored and to also I feel like at this point of my life to be the prodigal father who waits who builds who is faithful so that when our children come home so that when our grandkids one day come home my mom needs help my aunt my cousins my nieces that we as the prodigal father my wife and I as a prodigal home can be a blessing to others that really is our dream come true I'll close with this I was listening to or watch well watching and reading uh, I think his name is Lex something he has a podcast and on Twitter he wrote something about 2023 he's a young man maybe in his early 30s very famous podcast very well-spoken young man he was saying that he doesn't want to be about money or podcasting anymore he wants to be about building things that create or encourage love and I really thought, man, that is what I'm after. I'm no longer trying to find a beautiful wife. I got it. I'm not long, long, no longer trying to pastor a beautiful church. Done that. I've no, I'm no longer trying to make money or buy a house or have beautiful kids. Check, check, check. At this stage of life, I'm not done by any means, by any uh, stretch of the imagination. But it's no longer the same. I'm now wanting to love whatever it means however it looks whether it's speaking whether it's picking up people whether it's putting away the trash or whether it's cleaning somebody's house or driving a forklift or producing the next hit for a famous well-known Christian artist all of it is yes is welcomed here and I want to do it because my purpose is love to serve and to love my Jesus most and foremost and to love you to love my wife to love our kids to love this world that he died for john three sixteen, isaiah 61 are my life verses the spirit of the sovereign god is upon me for he has anointed us to preach good news to set the captives free and as my wife always says to live a life of joy a life of jubilee and as i like to say a life of ghost so ghostable right there so i encourage you if you need life coaching dm me reach out to me if you need music production if you need lessons on how to produce beat making workshops I do beat making workshops I teach music production workshops I teach songwriting workshops I teach mixing and mastering workshops that's what we do here we're building a community called Gozo we're building a community called living on Gozo Street living like I uh, living La Vida Gozo uh, living on, on Gozo Street Viviendo en la, en la calle Gozo, as I like to say, in Spanish and English. I'm also teaching at a Bible college for Victory Outreach called Veti. So I can't wait to do that again. I just taught, co-taught Systematic Theology 3 in Spanish to 23 students from Panama, Colombia, Cuba, 
Mexico, Central South America, here in the U.S., and I can't wait for more. Everything else will come. There's always something missing. There's always something that you, that the grass is greener over there, and it's not. Instead, just look at your life and be thankful. Look at your life as what it is, the beginning of happiness and the end of suffering. In Jesus' name. Make sure you reach out to me. Follow me on Instagram at David Trigg. And I will see you next time. Adios.